So we've just defined our position, and then we've defined our velocity and acceleration as then derivatives of the position and then derivatives of the velocity. So we can kind of go from here to here and from here to here by taking a derivative and by taking a derivative. And hopefully we feel comfortable about what a derivative is, what a derivative means. That's important, that's fine, but what's more important is that we think when we think of derivatives, we think of slopes. So what we can say is we can say the acceleration is the slope of the velocity versus time curve. We can say the velocity is the slope of the position versus time curve. And then if we want to go the other way, say if we know the acceleration, we want to find the velocity, then we have to take an antiderivative and same over here. Now, we can call the antiderivative the antiderivative. Oftentimes, we could instead call it the integral. Now, let's not worry too much about actually mathematically taking an integral. Just as with the derivative, right, the derivative represents the slope. The integral represents the area under the curve. And we're going to deal with simple enough functions, at least for now, that instead of having to take integrals, we're going to take areas. So we're going to also start out with a model. Model is a simplification to make our lives easier. In order to make right, these integrals into areas, we want to make a, mod, uh, a model that our acceleration is constant. So if we take this model, if we take a model that acceleration is constant, we can graph this. We can sketch this. We have here our time and our acceleration. And if we have a constant acceleration, well, constant acceleration is going to look like a constant. And then when we say this area, we are saying that our change in velocity is equal to the area under the curve. So when we're changing velocity, we want to start at some time and end at some time. And we'll just call this part a delta t. And then the area under this curve is going to then be this area here. Well, nicely enough, this is a shape that we already know the area of. It's a rectangle. So the height of our rectangle is this a, our constant acceleration. The width of this rectangle is delta v. So now we can write delta v is equal to acceleration times delta t. One last thing that we can do is we can write our delta v as the final velocity minus the initial velocity. This is just our delta v is equal to a delta t. And then solving for vf, we get that our VF, and then bringing the VI over to here, is VI plus acceleration. And usually for these equations, we don't use delta T, but just T. The VF equals VI plus AT. So just from finding the area, now this is kinematic equation number one. Very nice, very exciting. So then we want to then see if we can think of it the same way for this, this, right, finding the integral under this curve. Well, if we take a look at our velocity versus time curve, if our acceleration is constant, then the slope of our velocity is constant. And what functions have a constant slope? Lines have a constant slope. And so this is going to be our velocity versus time curve, or our velocity as a function of time. And then if we want to find the area of this, we're going to start ourselves, make ourselves nice, and just have this be our starting time, and this be our ending time, this being our delta t. And we want to find this area under this curve. Well, in order to make our lives a little bit easier, we can split this up into two recognizable shapes. We can do shape one and shape two. 
So looking over here, shape one is just another rectangle here, and it has a height of whatever this initial velocity was. So we can call this our initial velocity. So the area of one is going to be the I times delta T, just another rectangle. For two, this is now a triangle, and we need to do a little bit thinking about what the slope of this triangle is. Well, we know that a slope is rise over run. Our slope is also equal to that acceleration. That's why we have this. So our rise, we can say, is equal to A times our run, and our run is delta T. Why does this matter? Well, the area for a triangle is one half rise times run. We just found the rise is A delta T. We just found the run again. It's delta T again. So then we have this area of two is going to be one half rise A delta T run delta T. So now the area of both of these is equal to our delta S. So we're saying that our delta S is equal to the area of the first one, VI delta T plus the area of the second one, one half A delta T times delta T, we can call it is delta T squared. So we can do the exact same trick we did here, saying that the delta V is equal to VF minus VI. We can say delta S is equal to SF minus SI. And then we can bring that SI over. So then we get SF is equal to SI plus VI. And again, we're going to remove the deltas and just say T, VIT plus one half A T squared. And this is our equation two. So these two equations, we can do all of kinematics, but we have to remember where we came from. We came from this model that our acceleration is a constant. If our acceleration is not constant, we can't draw this specific graph, and we can't draw this specific graph. If I can't draw this specific graph, this area becomes different. If I can't draw this specific graph, this area becomes different, and we can't use these two equations.